Welcome to the save and style update for my game Yagas and Dungeons. As the name suggests, over the course of the last couple of weeks, I've worked on adding the ability to save your runs and come back to them. Moreover, the game now finally has at least some semblance of settings menu, albeit a very rudimentary one. This update also adds a prototype for a new playable character, a holy warrior or paladin for now. The name will most likely change in the upcoming update. Speaking of characters, Vrahenya's splash shard is finally finished, so it has been added to the game too. Her two daggers don't have a name yet, so if you have any suggestions, comment them down below and we might add those that we like to the official lore of the game world. Lastly, with the new zone dependent enemy styles and colors, a new foe has risen from the endless caves. Yaskinya, the new worm like boss can now be spawned for your boss fights. But now, let's get into the nitty gritty details of the implementations, starting off with the save system. In the case of Yagas and Dungeons being a purely single player game, I've decided to go with the resource based approach. In my opinion, for its little heads up cost, it allows you to serialize even the most complex classes, but it comes at the downside of the save files being easily editable and potentially misused for malicious intent. So going forward, I discourage downloading any save files for this game from the internet, since resource files in Godot can execute any code you put into them. Anyways, the way my system is set up is that at its core, we have a resource that will hold all the necessary information about the saved game that we need if we want to restore it to the original game state from before. The example are things like the player experience and gold, the currently generated zone area, the perks that the player has bought and much more. Then I made a singleton that gets auto-loaded, which holds a reference to this resource. Inside of this singleton, we have functions for loading and saving the resource to the user files using the resource loader class provided by Godot. When it comes to saving the run data, in the case of Yagas and Dungeons, it is done so every time you're about to pick the next room you will visit. Therefore, definitely leaving some room for saves coming. But even though this game is supposed to be a roguelike, I feel like I want to leave this ability in for those that want to abuse it or just have a more casual experience. After all, it's just a single player game and if there's ever going to be someone speedrunning it, I think the community will decide on some rules. But I digress. The save function loops through all the objects that are part of the persist group and calls the serialize function, which they need to implement themselves. The actual implementation of this serialize function varies from node to node, but each node handles its own set of data inside the save resource. For example, the player manager copies the values of its experience, gold, level of the abilities, perks into the resource. When it comes to deserializing or loading the data into the game, the singleton class loads the data into the resource always at the start of the game, but only when the player decides to continue the game with do the values from the resource get copied into the current instances of the nodes. This takes place during the start game function of the arena manager class, which uses a single conditional statement to go down either of the two paths, depending on the button you pick in the main menu, either new game or continue. Now moving on to the settings menu, I recommend this video from my use RP. They go into good amount of detail into how to implement a tab container based settings menu. The only change I made in my project was that instead of using file class, I went for the config file class that basically works as a JSON where each setting is a key that gets a value assigned to it, like in a dictionary. And this class is great for creating .ini files for your games. When it comes to changing the user key binds, I watched this video by Dash Nothing and for the most part I followed that tutorial, with the exception of saving the controls, for which I used my already existing system with config files dictionary, for which I created an extra field containing all the events that are rebindable in the game. As for the newly playable character Paladin, I guess there really isn't all that much to talk about since it mostly uses systems which were already implemented. Next up is the new boss, Yaskinya the Gluttonous. The body of this worm-like creature consists of multiple parts, and if you want to earn the reward for killing it, you need to destroy all the parts. It very much behaves similar to the worm enemies in the game Terraria, but talking about it would deserve its own video, so let me know whether you would be interested in that one in the comments. One entirely new basic enemy was also added, the Bastion, which shoots out bullets only if the player is too far away from it. The original two enemies, Follower and Shooter, were split up into two tiers now, one without any abilities and the second one that uses the original powers of dash and quick maneuvers. The game also got some minor changes to the UART card display for the perks, level ups and rewards, as well as an overhaul to the price of the perks in the shop, which is now the same as it is in the game Brotato. On top of that, enemies can now have different colors based on the zone you're currently playing in, fitting in more nicely with their surroundings. Last but not least, I also fixed some bugs that were present, such as the bullet speed being inversely dependent on your frame rate, making them slower on faster computers and insanely fast on low frame rate. 
This happened because I used delta time of the process function instead of the physics update one inside of physics update function. Another bug had to do with player character damaging their health with negative attack damage and positive life steal, bullets phasing through player, sanctums not working at all, and being able to reroll the shop even though you wouldn't have the money to do so. As always, the game is already available for playing on itch.io, with this update marking the version alpha 1.1.0 or the saves and styles update. If you're still watching, then it's been a pleasure and I thank you for sticking this long with me. But that is everything from me, so once again, thank you so much for watching and hopefully I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye!